Hi everyone and welcome to another piano review here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today we're going to look at Pearl Rivers UP115 Institutional Upright Piano. This is a tank of an instrument that occupies a very special part of the price range. This is the price range in acoustic pianos that has complete crossover with digital instruments, so it gets a tremendous amount of attention and focus when it comes to new piano shoppers, especially for beginner pianos. Uh, because the question really is, is, should I be looking at a used Japanese upright piano? Should I be looking at a new Chinese instrument? Are they really that competitive with the Japanese one? Or do I look at a digital? Because, you know, I've heard digitals are getting really good these days. So it sits at that interesting uh, crossroads in price range um, where you could have a number of people looking at this as a solution. So it's great to take a look at. We're really excited to sit down and see what this instrument was all about. If it's the first time that you are finding us here on YouTube, uh, we are a channel that is all about pianos, piano reviews, uh, piano community, piano playing, piano ownership, pretty well everything to do with piano. And we would love to have you be a new member of that community. So if you enjoy what you see here, please hit the notification and the uh, subscribe button uh, so that we can see you back for more. Without further ado, let's dive right in with our review of Pearl Rivers UP115 Upright Piano right away. So this is a 45 inch piano from Pearl River. It's part of their traditional upright series. Essentially it's their entry level line and Pearl River makes many different brands. Pearl River is the one focused on their lowest price point. So this is the lowest price point of the lowest price point. If we were going back 10 years, that would mean that we'd be sitting in front of a very poor musical instrument. That's not saying anything against Pearl River, uh, just generally speaking, anything at the bottom tier of any of the Chinese manufacturers 10 years ago, maybe even 15 years ago would be more fair, uh, was not a very impressive instrument. You had some major regulation and inconsistency problems with the action. You had very, very poor hammers being used. Uh, you had uh, you know, steel string that had all sorts of false beating and uh, weird harmonics coming off of it. Uh, you know, very low quality level of bass strings uh, being used on these instruments. Uh, and quality control wasn't great. They just, you know, you weren't getting a lot. And, and so there was no wonder why at that time there was such a preference uh, in the buying market, especially in North America, towards used Japanese pianos from the 1970s, 80s, and 1990s. Because for about the same price point, you were getting an instrument that just was musically and technically in much better condition. Um, fast forward to 2022, and uh, you know Pearl River, uh, Hailoon, um, I mean, those two, I guess, notably, uh, but there's probably several others that, that uh, you know, are deserving of mention uh, in the Chinese market that have really dramatically uh, improved the quality control and the musical success of the instruments that they are producing. And as the top of their lines um, have increased in price and quality and reputation, the bottom has kind of pulled up uh, proportionally speaking. And so when you sit in front of uh, a UP115, and this is uh, their institutional model, um, what you get uh, for the price is now definitely a comparable or um, if not equal, a comparable experience uh, to what you might get out of a similarly priced used Japanese piano, um, or at least an average one. Um, there are parts about this instrument which you don't expect. One of them is a sustain. This instrument has something like a 24, 25 second sustain in the mid range. Totally uncharacteristic for uh, this price point.
Another thing that I noticed right away is the evenness of the scale design from about C4, C5, all the way down. Anything down... The tone through the mid-range is actually getting to a point where it's competitive with, I would say, pretty good Indonesian product as well. And I need to point out, this isn't commentary on the entire Chinese piano industry. We're just talking about this particular model because in another video that we uh, just recently released on the overall Chinese market, there are instruments now being produced in that country which are totally competitive um, with other instruments coming out of Eastern European, uh, you know, uh, factories. Um, I'd say mid-range Japanese uh, models are, are now getting a run for their money from the very, very best uh, Chinese models. But this one right at the very bottom is what we're talking about. That's a nice round tone. as well um, feels quite responsive and very tight. Now, there are a few things about this instrument which um, separate it from the better instruments. It's not like you're getting everything for a super, super low price. There's still some telltale things about this instrument that, that kind of let your ear know that you are dealing with something uh, that's on the lower price of, the, of things. One of them would be the bass strings. The bass strings on this instrument aren't the most consistent you're going to find. You do still find some pretty good warmth, but there is a slight tubbiness that you get out of those bass strings. Nothing you can do about that. It costs money to get a great bass string. No way around it. You need really pure copper. You need you know, a workforce that is going to know how to wind those strings properly. And then you need the budget and the instrument to be able to throw a few of them out, uh, which isn't the cheapest thing. So. When you can't do any of those things, you're sort of left with bass strings, which used to be kind of just the norm, um, but uh, now you, you still find some of them getting onto these lower priced instruments. But despite that, the fact that the, there is a little cloudiness in it, there's actually a surprising amount of power and warmth that you still get out of the bass. So for accompanying, because I could definitely see a church putting this into a rehearsal space or a school, or a beginner who is going to have this in a home where the majority of the playing is happening in the mid-range of the piano and your bass notes really are just there um, for uh, purely harmonic support. Never really going to have you know major harmonic or melodic parts happening in the bass, you know, with with more basic repertoire. It's great. 
there's no there's nothing uh, wrong with that whatsoever. We've already talked about the mid range having a really nice full tone and a, a quite a good sustain. Um, as we move up. The other range of the instrument where you're going to start to sort of hear the price point a little bit coming out is going to be your treble. It's sort of right on the line of being a little bit glassy up there. But it's very tunable. Uh, so tuners and technicians, if you happen to be watching this, um, a lot of these shorter, cheaper instruments can be quite a pain to tune. Uh, this one is, is quite serviceable. And stable. Um, so we're not talking about a particularly complex bridge system, so you are going to uh, miss a little bit of complexity, but still, most of your playing, and I'm going to say this again, most of your playing as a beginner, um, and definitely for a lot of institutional use, not studio or, or recital use, but institutional use, churches, restaurants, clubs, bars, uh, you know, schools, most of your playing is banging away in the middle uh, half of the instrument. And this instrument in the middle half uh, is... I, it's really hard to find um, um, too many musical shortcomings. The instrument comes in a few different colors. It comes in satin black. It also comes in this satin cherry or mahogany. I'm not sure which it refers to, but it is sort of a reddish color. I suppose it's probably more of mahogany. The instrument comes with Pearl River hammers. It comes with Rosslow strings, which is a big improvement over what you would normally have gotten uh, at this price range. Uh, it comes with a sand cast plate. Um, I'm not sure that that actually has much of a benefit on an instrument like this because it, it's lacking some of the other harmonic components that might actually be able to draw some of those very subtle resonances out of a sandcast plate. I don't know. Um, but the back of it's also really solidly made. Um, there's nice big thick back posts uh, on this instrument um, and it is using an all spruce soundboard. Uh, it comes with a lock, which is great again for institutional use. Um, and it's got that uh, New England style uh, key cover as well. You know, the people I would find myself recommending this instrument to would be people who don't need uh, the sound management of a digital piano. They're, they're okay with the sound management of the digital piano where durability is really going to be a major um, a consideration. Um, and they've got, you know, they're coming into the market four, five, six thousand dollars to spend something like that. Uh, they're wondering whether digital or acoustic, new or used, is going to be um, a good option. And I would say a piano like this, or spe specifically this instrument, would be an excellent alternative to most digital pianos that I would find in a similar price range when it comes to the factors such as durability, when it comes to uh, things such as touch, because I think the touch on this instrument is probably as good. Um, as most of the digital pianos that are more in a premium range. I'm really impressed with the touch of this instrument, uh, again, for its price. Uh, so I think uh, beginner students, as I already said, institutions, I think it's, this would be a really interesting fit for, um, as particularly for people who can't uh, get themselves up into, uh, say, something like a Kawhi ST1 
or an ND21, both of which also has kind of like an institutional, um, you know, caster, or certainly anything uh, up into like a Yamaha U1 or a Kawai K300, which is really going to run almost double the budget of a piano like this. Hope you've enjoyed this look at the Pearl River UP-115, it's the institutional version. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, this quick review of this instrument, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, because we're doing all kinds of piano reviews all the time on this channel. Not only that, but buying tips, shopping tips, ownership tips, as well and just some other musical topics that we love to dive into. So, We'd love to see you back and, and enjoy uh, the community that's here. It's really awesome. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube, and we'll see you again soon.